synthesis of alkenes. The first reaction that we're going to see is the elimination reaction in which we have a starting compound and it yields an alkene. Let's look at an example. If I write A and B, which show two groups that are attached to the two carbon atoms, and in the end, they're both removed to form AB, AB, a byproduct, and an alkene, that is a carbon-carbon double bond is formed. Now we're going to see two examples. One is if we have H, hydrogen, on one carbon atom, and X, a halogen, on the other carbon atom, and in the end, we yield HX as a byproduct in addition to an alkene. This reaction is known as dehydrohalogenation reaction. This reaction, it occurs mainly by the addition of a base. This is minus HX, which means hydrohalide has been removed in the presence of a base. That base can be sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. Another example is if we have an alcohol, that is, we have hydrogen on one carbon atom and OH on the other, and we're dehydrating it. We're dehydrating the molecule, which means we're subtracting water molecule from it to give water here, I'll write H2O. I can also write it as, if I raise it and if I write it as H-OH, this will also be correct. And we again have an alkene. Let's move forward. This reaction, the one that we talked about, dehydration reaction, it occurs mainly in the presence of an acid. This is known as a dehydration reaction. Moving forward, let's discuss the reaction mechanism, how dehydration or dehydrohalogenation reaction occurs. The elimination reaction. For that, we must have a beta hydrogen atom now what is a beta hydrogen atom? This carbon atom binded directly to bromine is known as the alpha And the one binded right next to the alpha carbon is known as a beta carbon atom. Therefore, the hydrogen bonded to beta carbon atom is known as the beta hydrogen atom. Now, the beta hydrogen atom must be present here. We must have a beta hydrogen atom. What will happen is when we have ethoxide, for example, a base, we have ethoxide, the lone pair will attack this hydrogen atom. In response to this, hydrogen atom will lose its electrons and it will give its electrons to this carbon atom. What will happen is this bromine will take its electrons and leave. Because of this, what is going to form we're going to have a carbon-carbon double bond. When this hydrogen atom is giving its electrons to the carbon atom, we're going to have a carbon-carbon double bond here. No bromine is left, only these two groups and the two groups. So this means that hydrogen has left and bromine has left. Only this, this, this and this. These four groups will remain and we'll have in the end, in the end we will be having HBr. So this is dehydrohalogenation reaction. 
Let's discuss the mechanism of E2 reaction. It's very similar. This projection that you see, it represents the planes on which all of these atoms and molecules are present, right? So if we have the base here, ethoxide base, and it attacks the beta hydrogen atom in a similar way, again, this bond will be broken, double bond will form, bromine will take, take it, its electrons and leave. But there is a difference, there is a slight difference in E2 and E1 reaction, which is the formation of a transition, transition state. Now, what is a transition state? What is going to happen is that the bond of bromine and carbon will be breaking at the same time when a new bond of ethoxide will be forming on the other end, right? Like this will be happening simultaneously at the very same time. And the carbon-carbon double bond will also be forming at the same time, right? I'll write bromine here. So this whole state, this whole state is known as the transition state. And in the end, what will happen is that this bond will completely break. This will completely break. And we'll have a carbon-carbon double bond completely formed. Right. So what is going to be the product? The product will be an alkene. In addition to alkene, we will also have H, B, R. And ethoxide will only be acting as a base. It will only cause elimination to occur and then it will also separate. Now, Let's discuss the reaction kinetics or the energy diagram of E2 reaction. Now I must tell you where E2 reaction occurs. Let's first discuss where E2 reactions occur. E2 reactions, we can have three types of molecules. The first type of molecule that we may have is uh, the one which has R groups attached on all sides like this and bromine here. If we're talking about this carbon atom, we have three R groups attached, right? This is bromine, this is the alpha carbon atom. So alpha carbon atom is attached to three more groups. This is a tertiary alkyl halide, right? Now for primary alkyl halide, we have two R groups one hydrogen and bromine attached to it and for primary we have only one R group and two hydrogen atoms with one bromine all right one hydrogen another hydrogen and one R group this is known as this one is secondary and this one is primary alkyl halide so E1 and sometimes E2, they undergo E2 reactions, right? That means primary alkyl halide and secondary and sometimes secondary alkyl halide would undergo E2 elimination reactions. The mechanism that we discussed above was for primary and secondary alkyl halides and what is going to be the energy level diagram now let's discuss that for this let me consider let me take this reactant and put it over here put it on the reactant side over here like this right and let me take this transition state the whole transition state and I'll put it okay let's do it again yes 
this transition state is going to come over here like this and the product both products they will come over here okay let's see right so we have reactants over here reactants are ethoxide base and a hydro halogen or an alkyl halide over here we have a transition state this transition state is present at the peak or at the top and this whole area this arrow it represents the energy of activation that i'm writing as ea energy of activation it will give us this product and this is most unstable in the end it will yield an alkene so this is the energy level diagram which shows that this reaction is exothermic and it occurs for only primary and some secondary molecules this is e2 reaction that's all for today we'll be discussing e1 reactions and then we'll be comparing them in the next video